Hello, everyone. This is Sean Glover with Delphian Trading. Thanks for joining. Just going to wait a couple more minutes for everyone to join. So please be patient, probably two minutes, and then we'll start the uh, start the show. Thanks. All right, everyone, I'm back. Thanks again for joining. I appreciate you taking the time out of the day to watch the presentation. Um, again, as sent in the email, we're going to have a Q&A session at the end. So hold your questions until the end, but feel free to ask any pertinent questions at that point in time. Um, we're going to talk about some of the FANG stocks, and um, if you're not too familiar, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, um, they've had tremendous runs, you know, run up over the past years, so we're going to discuss some of those positions, and if now is still a good time to get in, um, and you can see some of the back tests and results based on that. Again, my name is Sean Glover, and I'm a trading strategist with Delphian Trading. I have uh, my partner here as well, Joshua Smithberger. He's a trading strategist as well. So we work together on some of the different trade ideas and strategies for our members. Um, here's a disclaimer, a basic disclaimer regarding the platform and, and what we do here. Um, you know, with the back testing and things like that, there are some trade ideas within the platform, but essentially, um, we're not licensed, so you can see that obviously some of those different regulations in there are covered with the disclaimer. This is Joshua Smithberger's information. He's, a, again, a trading strategist. He's worked at Merrill Lynch. He has over 15 years of experience trading equities and options, and he graduated from the Naval Academy. Myself again, Sean Glover. Um, I have futures and options trading experience. I ran a trade desk doing that, but I also have experience working with Schwab and Merrill Lynch trading equities and options. And I graduated from the University of Florida. So just a bit of information about Delphian trading. Uh, Delphian is a one of a kind, powerful institutional grade back testing platform. Uh, users can analyze industry standard signals and trading strategies based on historical results using the Delphian trading back testing functionality. The analysis provided within the platform can provide past probability and profitability of the signal based on a particular stock and or option strategy. The signals within the system and the trading strategies can be further optimized and tested with a few clicks within the platform. Optimization is crucial in finding highly probable strategies that stand the test of time. So that's what we're going to show you today. Essentially, we're going to take some signals, the state modeling algorithm within the platform and other market uh, signals, put those together and find good strategies for you, and then take that information, optimize it, and see if we can find some better win percentages and higher profitability. State modeling, again, is, um, is the algorithm that we use within the Delphian trading platform. It's Delphian's custom buy sell indicator. It was created by Ashok Yarlagata, the founder and CEO of Delphian Trading. The model itself is based on discrete mathematics called finite state machine or finite state automata. It's a mathematical model in which stocks and indices are placed into one of eight states. The eight states, which are similar to cycles or trends, are formed from our algorithm and provide bullish or bearish predictions. Delphian, also, Delphian Trading also provides you or gives you the direction of the underlying stock, profit targets, stop loss targets, as well as the time frame that Delphian Trading expects the move to happen. I'll show you some examples of state modeling as well now, so you'll get a good idea of, of the models itself and how they look. Um, just one side note as well, there are eight states. All of the odd numbers are bullish and all of the even numbers are bearish. So one, three, five, and seven are bullish states and two, four, six, and eight are bearish states. So since we're talking about the FANG stocks, I pulled up uh, the prices or the state modeling algorithm as of last night's close. So you can see for Facebook, a couple different points that stand out to me when I look at state modeling is on June 18th of 2019 of this year, Facebook went into a bullish state, state one, at a price of 188.47. You can see on average, it's in this state, this bullish state for 42 days, and on average, it moves 13%. Um, you can see also that the current days is 15 days that it's been in state one since June 18th, and the current move is 5.7%. We display targets, and we display stop losses. 
Uh, typically, you can see that between target two and target three, that's between about the 13%, which is the average move. So typically around that particular time, the price or the move might get exhausted and you might want to be a little more cautious if you're along the position. Um, these prices to the target, the profit target prices and the stop loss prices, they do not change during the time that Facebook is in state one. They will stay the same. So those are prices that you would want to look at. And typically we refer to our entry price and our targets as a support and resistance area. So these areas can really be noted to find some various support prices as well as those resistance. Uh, pull on to the next one, you can see Apple. So similar, Apple went into state one on June 13th. You can see the average days uh, as well as the current days and the profit targets also. Amazon, similar, Amazon went into a bullish state on June 14th. You can also see the average days in state one is 50 and the average move is 22%. Currently, it's moved up almost 6.34%. Netflix is the same on June 21st, went into a bullish state one at 369. A similar scenario here, you can see average days that it's in state 144, average percent is 29.48% moved to the upside. Google is the only one out of the group that has a bearish signal on as of right now, and you can see Google went into a bearish state, which again is state eight. All the even numbers are bearish. It went in on June 24th at 1,115.52. And typically you can see when Google goes into a state eight, it's in there for 31 days. And it, on average, it'll move down 8.87%. Um, also, I would look at this one a little more in detail as well, because you can see a couple days after it entered into state eight, it hit its profit target too. That's displayed by these two bars right here. So we've already hit the profit target. It went as low as 1072. Um, and then this is actually, this price is actually as of the closing of the eighth. I wanted to be able to show you a bearish picture of what it would look like in another state in a bearish state versus the other that are bullish. But Google did transition last night into state seven, which would be an intermediate type bullish trend for Google. A couple of the signals that we're going to talk about in the back tests that we performed, we performed three different back tests. Um, a couple of the indicators that we use, I want to explain them now just so that everybody has a kind of an idea. Keltner channels is one of them. A lot of people might use a Bollinger band instead of Keltner channels. Keltner channels are a volatility based channel set with lines above and below an exponential moving average. It's similar to Bollinger bands where Bollinger bands use standard deviation. Keltner channels use an average true range. Uh, this chart here is for Facebook. Um, it shows you year to date for Facebook, and this is using a 20 day two ATR Keltner channel. So you can see how the channels almost move like a moving average, kind of wrap around the price. Standard in the industry would be traders might use a break below or a break above this as either a buy or a sell point. But again, that's where the validity of the Delphian trading platform comes into play because you can actually test those theories and see if they work and how often they work. Exponential moving average, the EMA. So it's just a, it's similar to your simple moving average, except you just have more weighting to the most recent moves of the particular stock or stock price. And this is a 20-day EMA on Facebook, a year-to-date chart as well. So you might get uh, one of the signals that we use is actually an EMA cross, so a 20-day and a 50-day EMA cross. This is just the 20-day chart or 20-day EMA, excuse me. And then MACD, so the moving average convergent divergence. It's a momentum indicator um, that follows a trend, and you can see it's based on calculating the 26-day EMA and the 12-day EMA. And again, this is on Facebook year-to-date as well. And also, as a side note, all of these charts that I pulled up are charts that you can display within the Delphian trading platform, all of the indicators you can add and overlay on the chart as well. So all of these images are from the platform. Now we use Fang stock when we created the stock list. So we use the Fang stocks, excuse me. So we use Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. We created it using a manual set so we can create a stock list and we can customize that. You can create a stock list using various signals or 
other manual ones as well and just build the stock list out as you see fit. Um, now for the back test, we use the back test wizards. Uh, we at Delphian designed the wizards to make it more simple and kind of give you a map, if you will, to help you be able to, to devise a back test. So with this back test here, we just went into the back test, used wizards, and we actually use signals to create our back test. Anytime you're creating a back test within the system, these are the main things that you need to do within the system to submit and see the results of the back test. First, you're gonna to have to create an entry signal. So you need to be able to let the platform know how it's gonna run the back test and what's gonna be the signal for the platform to enter into a trade. Also, you have to do an exit signal. So you're gonna to have to tell the platform when to actually exit the trade. Your entry exit dates are gonna be your time frame. So the time frame that you're gonna use to actually run the test. Um, and then your trade rule is gonna be the type of trade that you want to perform on the actual back test. Um, it could be a long stock, short stock, a long call, and a bunch of variety of complex options trades as well. And then you can preview it and then actually run the back test. Um, for these examples here, we're only using a long call. So we just use a long call position. Uh, the reason we did that was we assume for the most part that when the trade works on a long call position, typically it's going to work on some of the bull call, bull put type trades as well. So those are other trades that we can back test or users can back test at their leisure. So the first test we did using a signal was the state one transitions. This signal will only be available to users of the Delphian trading platform. Again, this is based on our state modeling algorithm. Um, so anytime a FANG stock enters into a state one transition, meaning the bullish state, um, we're going to actually purchase the option or purchase the stock. In this particular case, we're using, again, a long call. Uh, we're going to exit the trade at a time stop of 120 days or if the profit target or stop loss is hit. So whichever comes first. Um, again, we're using a stock list. So I created the stock list thing for the stock or the Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Google, Netflix. Our testing period was January 3rd, 2007 to January 2018, using one content. The platform contracts are devised how you want to do it. Um, it's just going to your, your investment parameters. The state one trend uh, based on those entry exit dates, as well as using a long call, has an expiration at 60 days. We're using a strike selection as 2% above the current close, a profit target of 50%, and a stop loss of 50%. Back to the strike selection, we have multiple ways that you can choose a strike selection within the platform. It's just gonna be up to you to devise your trading type strategy when you're using that selection. Um, when we get a result, it shows our profit. So you can see our profit here for this trade over that time frame was $63,000. You can see a profit factor of 2.12 and a win rate of 62%. So typically what myself looks for when I'm trying to devise a strategy for myself or for my users. I look for typically over 75, preferably if I get 80% win rate, I'm doing pretty good. Um, but this one's at 62%. So what this makes me want to do is see if there's a way that maybe I can optimize this strategy a little bit better. So now I've optimized the strategy and all I did was change my trade rule. Instead of taking a 50% stop loss, I'm willing to take 100% stop loss on the long call. Um, so now I'm still using the same parameters except for that stop loss is 100%. You can see my when my profit percentage, I mean my profit amount, excuse me, went up to 92,000. My profit factor went up a little bit as well to 2.44, but my win rate jumped up to 73%. So we got a little bit of an increase, but again, like I said, I typically want it to be above 75, preferably 80%. Um, so I'm still, you know, looking to maybe optimize this trade a little bit more see if I can squeak out a better win percentage. And then also I didn't mention before, we can see the equity graph below. So the equity graph essentially just shows you your total equity as you move forward throughout time of the trade. So on the third uh, adjustment that I made, I actually added secondary filters to my signal as well. So I kept the long call the same way with the 50% profit and the 100% stop loss, but I added in secondary filters of the MACD line has to be greater than zero, and it had to be in a previous state of state two. So typically a state two is almost looked as being a temporary pullback in a particular security or a stock. So if a previous state, state two, it pulled back, and now we might 
now it might be looking for the stock to increase and move higher if it moves into a state one. So we can see using these secondary filters that I dropped my profit down a little bit from the previous run to 71,000, but I doubled or more than doubled my profit factor and my win percentage is at 81%. So I'm right at the number that I wanna be. Um, and then you can also see based on me adding these secondary filters in, I actually rejected 111 trades. So out of about 170 or 180 trades, I rejected a little more than half of the trades based on the secondary filters not being met. So even though my profit's a little bit lower, um, you know, I'm actually rejecting some trades, so I'm not trading as much, which I think you know, leads you to believe that you might not be risking as much or in the trade as much as well. And you can see the equity graph below is substantially better than the one previously as well. Um, and this just shows you what it would look like on a chart based on that state two to state one transition. So here, these trades would not be valid because they did not, the state one did not follow a state two. So a state five to a state one, and then a state four to a state one. So these would be two of the trades that had been rejected in that 111 rejections. And the next slide shows you trades that would be valid. So you can see a state two to a state one, and then another state two to a state one. Those are two trades that would be valid because essentially the state one, the state two, excuse me, was followed by a state one. So that makes those trades valid based on those secondary filters. And so this shows the state one transitions trade that we did. And it shows the event, essentially how did each of the symbols perform? Because obviously not all symbols are going to model the same way to all different indicators or all the same indicators, excuse me. So this kind of breaks it down and shows you possibly out of those five stocks which stocks might be the better trade to use. And you can see here, using those, using that run three that we used, um, you can look to see the Apple has an 89% win rate, 17 winners, two losers, and then it rejected 26 trades. And we were only in the trade. Days in trade was 20. So we're only in the trade 20 days on average. Um, you can also see another one that looks well is going to be your Netflix and your Google. Those are both an 88% and an 86% win rate. Amazon and Facebook, Facebook 70% win rate, Amazon is a 60% win rate. So those are two trades that if these signals hit on those two symbols, I might not trade Amazon or Facebook. I might try to look you know, for another trade. All right, the next signal is gonna be the Keltner, the Keltner channel drop. So this entry signal is when the close price crossed below the lower Keltner channel and we use the 20 day and a two ATR. Exit signal is the same as before, time stop of 120 days using the same signal, the same uh, symbol list, excuse me, and our testing period was from January 3rd, 2007 to April 18th, 2019. So the run one, you can see we use similar to what we did on the previous trade. Um, our profit here is 55,000. Our profit factor is 1.37. Our win rate was only 56%. So this is definitely one that I'm gonna either push to the side and not use this signal, or I'm gonna to try to optimize it and see if I can find a better you know, strategy or maybe better filters on top of this one as well. So we did a profit, fat, profit of 50% and a stop loss of 50% on the previous. Now we're doing this profit target of 50% and the stop loss of 100%. You can see our profit jumped up. Our profit factor is 1.56 and our win percentage jumped up as well to 70%. So we're getting closer, but we're still not to that area to where we think we, you know, we obviously still think we can optimize this trade more. So now, same same scenario as before, the 50% profit and the stop loss of 100%, but we're adding in secondary filters on this one as well. But we're going to delay the entry into the trade until the symbol enters into a bullish state, a bullish state within state modeling. So again, that one, three, five, or seven state. And when we add these secondary filters here, our profit factor, I mean, excuse me, our profit jumped up to 168,000. Our profit factor is above two, 2.53. And our win rate is right near that seven, that 80% at 78%. Uh, you can see we have 232 winners, 64 losers, and we have two trades that were rejected based on not being in that, uh, that state. And you can see based on the equity graph below, it's much better than one previous as well. We have a little loss here, but it's a pretty decent slope. Here, this is the same thing as before the Keltner channel with how did each symbol perform based on that last run. Um, based on this one, you can, if you look at the Google trade, you can see the profit was 128,000 and the profit factor 11.83. Win percentage is a 91%. So 
61 winners, six losers, and one rejected trade. So out of the group of five, I would look at the Google first. Then we have Facebook is still above 87, uh, is above 80. It's at 87% as well. Profit factor is a little bit lower, but one thing I would note on this chart that I look at is I look at my average risk on open. So for Google, my average risk on open is 2.3 thousand. And then on Facebook, it's actually $429. So depending on your personal risk parameters, this might be something you wanna look at as well and would help you devise a strategy based on that. Uh, the next one is the EMA cross. So our entry signal is gonna be the 20 day EMA crosses above the 50 day EMA. Exit signal stays the same, stock list, is the same and our testing period is the same as before. So the first run for the EMA cross is a long call, again, a profit target of 50% and a stop loss of 50%. You can see our profit is 41,000 with a profit factor of 3.78. We have a win percentage of 69%. So we still need a little ways to go to optimize a little bit more to get above the 75%, uh, but we're, we're on the way. Equity graph looks pretty good below. And now we're using the same as before, except again, we're adjusting our stop loss to 100%. Our profit is, is near the same, 48,000, profit factor of 4.84. Our win percentage jumped up to 79%, 55 winners, 15 losers, and one rejected. Again, another really good looking equity graph. Now on the last EMA cross, we actually added the secondary filters in again. So we're adding in the MACD signal line has to be greater than zero, and it must be in a bullish state, one, three, five, or seven. Our profit stayed the same as before. It didn't really adjust our profit too much, 44,000. Our profit factor, however, doubled, 9.28, and our win percentage went up above 80%, at 86%. 36 winners, six losers, and we had 29 trades rejected. So again, we were able to minimize a lot of that active trading and get some of, get rid of some of those trades that might not be as beneficial and kind of keep those ones that you know we're more confident about using those secondary filters and you can see again the equity graph below and this shows you how those symbols performed as a, as a group so you can see within if you look at apple the win percentage is 100 percent only six trades that would be active over that 12 year span um, zero losses 10 rejected just based on not meeting those secondary filters Facebook's 100% win rate, Google's 100% win rate as well, and Amazon's above 90% at 92%. Uh, if you look though, Netflix is the only one that looks like it didn't perform well as this at the EMA cross, and that's fine. That just lets me know that Netflix might not model well with those EMA crosses. So if I'm trading Netflix, I might wanna use some other indicator or some other signals to find a trade that might model well with Netflix. Um, that's the end. We did three basically of the back tests, um, but I think they give you a good example of ways that you can put those signals within the platform and find good trades for those FANG stocks. So in the email previously, I think it spoke about, you know, regulatory um, regulations possibly coming on those particular stocks in that industry, but we still think that there's some good opportunities out there. You just have to be patient and plug in some of these indicators and signals and let Delphi and trading show you when those good entry points are. Um, you can subscribe today on our website, DelphianTrading.com, and you can also go to our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search Delphian Trading, and you can pull up a bunch of videos on there that actually show you the platform, show you the platform, uh, how to use it, the functionality, and it dives into the platform just like a demo would. Uh, if you sign up today, you can sign up on the website. You will actually receive a free copy of our book. We didn't really talk too much about the studies that are within the book, but Josh and myself, Anna Shook, created a handful of studies using signals similar to these. And whenever those signals show us a good win rate above 75%, we've used those back tests to actually help generate trade ideas within the system that members have access to. And the book actually goes through the studies, explains the signals, and explains how those studies were set up and how to actually use those studies in your trading. Um, if you did sign up today, Ashuk agreed to offer a 25% off the membership after the 30-day trial. If you wanted to sign up, you could sign up for a $10 trial, and it gives you 30 days access to the platform. During that 30-day trial, you actually have access to myself and Josh. You can use us to do demos, help you devise strategies, set up strategies for you as well. Um, but I uh, would definitely use us if you sign up for that trial. We have our monthly memberships and our annual memberships as well. 
And then I'll leave it right now to any questions anybody has. I wanted to thank everybody for joining the webinar. If you have any questions, you can use the Q&A chat session um, and we'll respond to some of the questions. We'll try to get to a couple of the questions within the chat. Um, any other questions that we can't get to, we'll actually send out via email to everyone with the answers. So we wanna make sure we cover you know, everybody's questions as well. And then also as another note, um, we're going to be, we're recording the webinar. So we're actually gonna have the webinar sent out as a recording and I believe we'll have it sent out another way as well. And then if you have any questions that you wanna personally send to myself or send to Josh, here's our information below. Um, we're located in Tampa, Florida. Um, the contact information, the contact number for the office is 813-330-0900. And then our extensions are noted below as well. And just one second, and we're going to pull out some questions and see if we can get some questions answered for you. All right, thank you guys. Um, there's a question regarding the uh, the presentation and the YouTube channel. So the presentation we will send out. I believe we'll be sending out um, definitely the recorded portion, and I'll find out to see if we can send out the PPT version as well. I don't see why there'd be a problem doing so. Um, and then also again the YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube, type in Delphian Trading there'll be a new member playlist and you can actually view all the playlists there. There's tons of videos in there to check out. They're very informative, um, but I would say, you know, you can use those as a good indication on ways to set up stock lists, ways to create signals, things like that. So it is some valuable information, but again, too, you know, you wanna make sure you're using Josh and myself as a good source to help you kind of dig into the platform a little deeper. Typically, I want people to give me an idea of the type of trading you know, that they're doing, are they trading just long stock or short stock, you know, or what type of options are they trading? And that helps me devise some better strategies for them within the system as well. Obviously everybody's risk tolerance and risk parameters are gonna be different based on, you know, their portfolio size and other personal factors as well. So we try to, to customize it as best we can to the individual member and the individual investor. All right, there was another question regarding the secondary filters. So we found in the studies and some other various places within the platform that the secondary filters are very important to optimize the strategy. Um, you have access, members have access to many different filters or signals within the system. So using those are really going to be up to you to be able to customize them. But, you know, we use anything from state modeling like we did in the, the platform or the presentation here um, to different things such as a moving average or something, a correlation. Maybe you want the stock to be correlated to the S&P if you think the S&P is bullish or a correlation to the Russell. Maybe you think the Russell is bullish. Those secondary filters, I think, are the best way to be able to optimize a trading strategy and come up with a better win rate. Um, also regarding state modeling, we have some questions on state modeling. Um, again, state modeling, we have some documents that we can send out that provide more information regarding state modeling, but state modeling is one, three, five, and seven. Uh, those are gonna be your bullish states, two, four, six, and eight are bearish. But state modeling, you can really use that algorithm as a good support and resistance area. So um, when I'm looking at those prices and I'm looking at those state modeling pages, that really gives me a good indication of a possible point that might be a resistance or support for the stock. I use that as well as you, I use the average number of days within the state and the average percentage move. That helps me devise some option strategies. If I'm looking to buy a long call, that helps me devise how long I want to buy um, that long call for. So I'm looking at my expiration days, plus it helps me figure out the strike price for my option as well. Okay, and then one last question regarding help and assistance. So all of the members, again, have access to, to Josh and myself. Uh, the platform has a help section where you can, any section that you're in the platform, you can hit the help section and it'll give you a PDF version and a web version of the actual platform and explain to you the various parts of that particular section. Um, also, we have PDF documents that cover state modeling, a getting started guide, and the platform itself. Um, but again, I think the main and the most valuable tool to use during your time as a member is to use Josh and myself as a as a tool. I mean, we have experience using the platform, and I think we can help you speed up your learning curve uh, by just working with us on some of the demos. I think we have a couple more questions, so just give me one second. 
And there was a question regarding the max rundown on some of the results page. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to try to find one of the results page real quick and see if I can get over to that section. So this is one of the pages here. So if we look at max rundown on this state one transitions page, we can see the max rundown was 81,000. And again, this is for a long call. So a long call position, which has a defined risk type, which is a defined risk strategy. However, the max rundown is going to show you that when you're in a position and the position was losing money, if you sold the position at the lowest point or the most loss on that position, uh, and you did that for every position within this category, so we're talking about 113 plus 68 trades, so you're talking about 181 trades. If you sold those, every trade, if you sold each of the trades at the lowest point, for the maximum loss and you added those together, that's your max rundown. All right, so last question is, is regarding state modeling. So typically, um, the question is basically, if, if the market takes a big drop and has a big sell-off, do the stocks stay in the same state? Typically not. So if you have a stock similar to Facebook or Apple and it's in the state one and the market starts to sell off and, and Apple follows suit or Apple is a leader and starts selling off beforehand, uh, the algorithm should pick it up and it's going to transition into another state. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to transition into the most bearish state right away, which will be bearish state eight, uh, but it might transition into a state two um, and then kind of progress down based on that. If I scroll up, if I scroll up on the screen here and show you one of the state modeling pictures, uh, there's a pretty, let's see if I have it in here. I don't have it in this particular slide here, but we do have another section as well on state modeling that shows you the probability that the stock or the symbol is going to move into a different state. So for Amazon here, the probability of it moving into a state two might be 90%, let's say. So some of those next state probabilities can be used to almost uh, kind of predict where the stock might be headed based on the algorithm. It does give you a probability, so the probabilities can change, but uh, yeah, as this, as the market's dropping and the stop's dropping, it should it should change states as as it moves along. And sometimes you do see state chains states change from one day to the next. So a stock might be in a state two today, and if some of the market environment did change overnight or the previous day, you could see it move into a state four the next day. So that does happen. I've seen it happen, but I think that gives you a pretty good indication of the move that that stock might see moving forward. So that's all the questions that we're going to take now. Any other questions that we have in there, we're actually going to be sending out via email. So you'll be receiving those. And again, there's going to be a recording to this uh, webinar that you'll be able to watch as well. Um, we're going to send out the PPT version also. And feel free, if you have any questions, um, you can contact myself, contact Josh uh, via the emails and the information located on the screen here. Um, we'd be more than happy to provide you a demo before you signed up for the trial if you want to do that as well. But again, we'd like to kind of know some personal information regarding your trading and investment style that helps us better suit the demo for you. Um, but again, thanks for joining. I certainly appreciate it. Everybody have a good day and uh, talk to you soon.